Okay, so in meanwhile, other participants will keep joining. Uh, uh, let's start with today's session. So uh, the last session that I delivered yesterday in the morning uh, talks about, uh, please confirm I'm audible and visible. Yes, sir. yes sir. Okay, thank you. So uh, in last session, we talked about uh, various web frameworks, but uh, due to the time restrictions, uh, we were only able to talk about uh, uh, or have a hands-on of about uh, Falcon web framework. But uh, barring that, uh, there are other web frameworks as well, uh, like Fast API Flask, which I'll show you. Uh, but uh, uh, initially, we talked about uh, how web works mainly uh, as a question. Uh, uh, but uh, the overall concept was that uh, Django would have been taught, Flask would have been taught, and two other frameworks would have been taught. A simple program like just a hello world uh, using the URL APIs, how they work, what what is the difference. Uh, so, so those things we were uh, uh, bothered to mention, uh, uh, bothered to learn about uh, during those sessions. Uh, but what is the reason behind learning various web frameworks or knowing that there are full stack web frameworks, micro web frameworks, customizable frameworks, uh, they have different features. What is the meaning behind all of them? Uh, why are we learning them? So the main reason is to have a knowledge of how to compare uh, various web frameworks which are present in market. One is, of course, the needs. As per the business requirement, uh, if we are not uh, uh, fit, uh, uh, if, if some uh, a full stack framework do not fits into our requirement, of course, we are going to switch to some uh, some customizable framework. Uh, but but still, there are so many customizable frameworks nowadays. So how to choose among them? There should be a criteria to compare various web frameworks, and it's important uh, to know how to compare web frameworks as well. Uh, because uh, meanwhile, in, or eventually, you're going to uh, going to uh, uh, deploy this knowledge somewhere or apply it to the real life problems. Uh, at that time, it will be useful for you to know what are the tools of comparing various web frameworks. So, with that agenda, uh, uh, initially for uh, 20 or 30 minutes we will talk about uh, comparison of web frameworks and then we will move on to the next uh, talk that is management of these web services that we have made so far so agenda will uh, remain uh, today to talk about why are we comparing web frameworks to know the reason behind it algorithm for comparison and code to run the algorithm apache benchmarking which is a, a tool actually uh, which we will use and comparing three different web frameworks uh, finally, what's the code for comparison? And over, uh, so we will uh, talk about the R code here, another language, uh, and the overall comparison results or the uh, experimental knowledge. I'll, I'll try to show to you. So uh, before uh, go, uh, jumping to finally that how to compare web frameworks, we are finally actually making some decision. So uh, let's understand what is decision. So there are seven steps of. Uh, 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 fully structured decision making process and what is decision making it's a process of making choices by identifying a decision gathering information and accessing alternate resolutions using a uh, a step by step approach using the step by step decision making process one can uh, that can help you to make a more deliberate thoughtful decision by organizing relevant information and defines alternatives uh, uh, and information uh, defining those alternatives. This approach to increases the chances that you will choose the most satisfying alternative, uh, whichever is uh, possible. Okay, so decision making is the process of making these choices uh, of identifying decisions and gathering information and finally making some conclusive results out of them. So that's majorly about them. And the seven steps you can simply, uh, simply see that uh, identify first, what the decision that you are supposed to be making. Finally, in step two, you gather the information around the uh, key points uh, around which you have to make a decision. Finally, identify what are the alternatives. Uh, when we are making some decisions, say a comparison only, uh, for example, buying a car, then um, of course, buying car is the final decision that you have to reach to. But before that, you have to gather some information like uh, what is the capacity of car, what are the colors available, uh, which different companies are giving them. So this this point that what are the different models or different companies which are in the race uh, that can provide you a car is finding different alternatives. 
once you have done gathered the information identified the alternatives you weigh the evidences uh, that okay this car is more good this car has more capacity this car has more uh, 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 weight carriage and so on and so forth finally uh, choosing among the alternatives is one of the main focus of making a decision once you have made then and you take the action uh, you 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 have decided from uh, weighing the evidences that you have got so far from uh, gathering information and uh, finding the alternatives uh, you have uh, choosed one or two among the alternatives or as per your need and you take the action and finally when you have taken an action or made a decision you review your decision okay so uh, this this all actually it comes into uh, something called as a multi criteria decision making approaches uh, uh, this is actually uh, uh, what mcd or multi criteria decision making analysis is it's a formal structure and transparent decision making methodology its aim is to assist group or individual decision makers to explore the decisions in case of complex situations with multiple criteria it's something similar to a, a group decision making process so what group decision making is uh, group decision making also known as collaborative decision making or collective decision making is a situation when individuals collectively make a choice from an alternative before them the decision is then no longer attributed by any single individual who is member of a group this is because all individuals and social group processes uh, such as social influences contribute to the overall outcome uh, so uh, what is a group decision when many people join uh, and then they give their decision uh, they give their mindset what should be the decision and finally uh, listening to all the viewpoints uh, uh, a decision is made so let us uh, uh, something uh, made with a uh, something like in democracy we called janganna so in workplace settings collaborative decision making is one of the most successful models to generate buy in from other stakeholders build consensus and in, encourage creativity actually uh, according to the idea of synergy uh, uh, decisions made collectively also tend to be more effective than decisions uh, made by single individuals in this way certain collaborative arrangements have potential to generate better net performance or outcomes than individuals acting on them under normal everyday conditions collaborative or group decision making would uh, uh, often be preferred and uh, would generate more benefits than individual decision making and uh, when there is time for proper deliberation discussion and dialogue as well but multi criteria decision making or mcda that we explained uh, that i talked earlier uh, uh, and unstructured decision making that could happen have some differences so we may simply evaluate uh, uh, a chemical process uh, to an individual criteria such as uh, risk where risk is a product of uh, 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 i'm talking about this uh, multi criteria decision making versus some unstructured decision making process uh, all decisions are subjective of course and all uh, decision makers are somewhat biased it it could happen in a group right so uh, let's take this example we may simply find evaluation of a chemical process uh, to an individual criteria such as uh, risk hazard and exposure are three criteria where risk is the uh, risk is a product of hazard and exposure okay so if hazard is a quant uh, quantified numerically by using some toxicity scale uh, and an exposure is measured by uh, uh, the material flow then risk could be calculated that how much exposure has happened and how hazardous was the uh, product so simply uh, the formula for uh, risk could be a uh, risk is equal to ha hazard into exposure okay so uh, uh, we could see that how a simple thing like this uh, 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 simple uh, 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 expression for finding risk from a chemical uh, Uh, from a chemical could be mathematically changed into uh, uh, some quantities using hazard and exposure and hazard could be uh, numerically measured and exposure is can also be numerically measured using how much milliliters of uh, or how much grams of that product has been used and hazard is simply the toxicity scale so these these both things could be mathematically measured and finally risk 
which although seems to be uh, 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 not a not an objective measure but using uh, uh, using our knowledge of hazard and exposure which could be numerically measured we have measured risk as well uh, objectively uh, uh, but the process with uh, uh, the process with minimum risk value is not automatically the best one uh if we consider more criteria like say energy cost source efficiency etc uh which of these criteria are more important we do not clearly have an answer for some uh uh it, it, it actually depends upon uh, the incidents that have happened with you okay so hazard and exposure hazard into exposure could be just one way to very simply put into equations but uh, energy cost resource efficiency that could be some other criteria uh through the use of mcda a large number of perhaps individually less important indicators uh do not get ignored in the final decision during a simplification that relies too heavily on a small number of key criteria as uh, we are seeing here if we could have considered risk is equal to hazard into exposure that is one way of putting things mathematically but uh, there are other emotions related to others as, uh, uh, related to various people as well so uh, the one we talked about risk is equal to hazard into exposure is an unstructured decision making process of course we try to bring some uh, some structure into it but we are ignoring some other factors that we talked about but in an mcda or multiple criteria decision making approach it's a group consensus making and uh, uh therefore every small criteria or every single emotion could be managed mathematically or or taken into account uh, a very small detail so unstructured decision making often fails to make use of a uh, consider the uncertainty surrounding different criteria while mcda can be used in conjunction with uh, some other uh, algorithms like monte carlo simulation to take account of modeled uncertainty of the certain values uncertainty of the subjective criteria performance and provide a uh, known level of certainty in proposed uh, unachievable uh, in unstructured which is unachievable in unstructured decision making process okay so uh, that's majorly about it that in general the decision maker follows some process like identifying multiple criteria on which they base their decision identify multiple uh, alternative solution to the decision uh, uh, subjective ranking uh, that is providing the weights of the criteria that we talked uh, in the very first session uh, in very first slide uh, step number 4 weighing the evidences okay so uh, uh, yeah so providing subjective ranking or weighting of a criteria and finally providing value ranking and uh, weighting of alternatives for each criteria is something what a mcda methodology generally do but we have to understand that mcda is an umbrella term for a range of tools and methodologies and there are some uh, different algorithms that have been uh, present under this umbrella term itself so uh, by now we have understood simply that uh, multi criteria decision analysis is a sustainability assessment uh, uh, to be made now uh, one particular algorithm that falls under the multi criteria decision making approach is analytical hierarchy processing now what it is uh, how it was developed we will talk about it now analytical hierarchy processing was developed in late 1970s today it is the most widely used multi criteria decision making method ehp generates all criteria weighing and alternative uh, preferences within each criteria by eliciting these values from decision maker through a series of pairwise comparison as opposed to utilizing numerical values directly so there's a complex decision is uh, reduced to a series of simpler ones between pair of alternative values within criteria or between pairs of criterias mind uh, or, or wait with me take a breath and uh, think of how i'm connecting the dots uh from starting we said that we are talking about web technology and and later on uh, we came to uh, what are various web frameworks but now the discussion is moving to another end where we are talking about decision making which is a totally different uh, different topic but uh, bear with me how i am connecting these dots to uh, make a transition from decision making to multi criteria decision making analysis approach and from that we are coming to analytical hierarchy processing once we have understood it with simple example we will see that how this concept could be later applied to uh, web development as well 
uh, or, or comparing comparison of uh, web frameworks. Okay, so important is that web framework comparison. Comparison comes into picture and how do we compare? For that, we need to have some understanding of decision making. So that's why we are focusing on these details. Uh, uh, now let's focus on analytical hierarchy processing for the time being. Uh, a complex decision is reduced to a series of simpler ones between pair of alternative values within criteria or between a uh, pair of criteria. Decision maker's preference is always explicit. However, the decision maker may be asked to uh, make very uh, many small decisions. Hence, it becomes important to generate an optimized hierarchy of criteria and alternatives to reduce the number of pairwise decisions actually. Uh, let's go to the example now. Uh, and I'm skipping some of the mathematical details so that it should not become too boring for you to, uh, and, and easy to understand you as, as well. But I want uh, everyone's participation here. Let's take a very easy example of this uh, of this guy known as Ram. So Ram just turned three weeks, uh, uh, three, uh, three years, just few weeks back. Okay. Now is the time to put him either to a child nursery or a kindergarten school. Uh, uh, the sim uh, story is very simple that uh, this is a guy, Ram, and his parents are thinking that, okay, uh, it's the right time that we should put Ram into uh, a child nursery, kindergarten, or, or such small schools, uh, uh, schools for small babies, uh, uh, which are there, uh, available around the city. Now, city Ram lives in has many good schools nearby. Okay, and earning a good reputation, uh, and all those various schools earn a good reputation uh, in the society. Okay, now, what uh, do you think might be various criteria for parents of Rams to choose a perfect school for him? Okay, so it's a very easy story that Ram is a small guy of near about three years. Uh, and now it's it's the time that his parents think that we should put him into a school. But there are many schools in the city uh, uh, available where Ram could be put for his uh, this kindergarten schooling. What should be the criteria of Ram's parents to think while choosing a school for Ram? Uh, let me just break the ice here by giving an example. One of the criteria could be how close the school is from home okay i want more of such criteria from you that what should uh, ram's parent think uh, or what other criteria should be taken into account while choosing a school for ram you could use a chat box here uh, to to put various criteria that you think i guess everyone's clear with the question One of the criteria is uh, could be that how school uh, how how far the school is from home, okay, or how far or close the school is from home. Take it anyway. What could be another criteria? Let's make make it interactive. Uh, please comment in chat box. Now, uh, if you don't know. Uh, just going to the meeting, there's a show conversation box. If you're able to comment here, please do comment. Or use your mic to speak about it. Participants, please respond so that uh, we can communicate properly. Uh, sir, how are the teachers of that school? This could be considered. Yes, uh, how's the teaching staff? That could be one reason. One criteria actually. What else? Uh, how many extracurricular activities are there? Exactly, extracurriculars. That could be another reason. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I feel it's it's just that uh, we have not interacted uh, in, in other sessions as well. That's making you to stop others, other participants to speak most about it. Uh, let, let, uh, but the two reasons that have been put forward till date are, are good. Uh, those are some of the other criteria even I jotted down. So how educated 
is the staff of school that's an important thing uh, before putting a child into some kindergarten even what is the fee structure of school uh, everyone pockets uh, uh, have a limit right so uh, fee structure is one of the main concern when uh, students are put into schools uh, everyone's not a rich rich uh, so is the school offering a van service for small kids that's another concern and how how friendly the staff is in 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 all these uh, van services or uh, while taking students for lunch uh, to or even to take these three four year kids to even to washrooms even uh, how's the staff behaving with them uh, or or the workers of the school behaving with them all those criteria matter another could be what is the syllabus to teach to these students that could be one another criteria what's the school's reputation in the community around uh, schools generally have a reputation right uh, some are more conservative some are more liberal uh, so those values are also important while choosing a school because ultimately your your child is going to be surrounded by those people uh, uh, in the mindset uh, of, of which school's philosophy you put them into what all extra curricular services students are indulged into correctly uh, you mentioned uh, one of the uh, one of the participant mentioned that extra curricular activities could be another reason yes those are different criteria but 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 by now uh, uh, we all have understood the case study right Uh, a small kid was there, and the final goal was to decide a school for him. Uh, and then uh, these were the different criteria that we could figure out. So uh, this simple problem could be actually changed into something uh, into the format of analytical hierarchy processing. Uh, the steps that actually uh, we just skipped uh, these 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 simple steps or five six steps of an AHP algorithm. and i guess this example would have uh, helped you to understand these things we just have to break the problem that we have for decision making in hand into three steps one is to choose a goal which is going to be our final goal uh that is choose a school for ram of course and then think of the criteria on the basis of which i will choose a school and these and uh, this various criteria has been talked in the last slide how to choose a school educated staff is extra curricular and so on and finally uh, some alternatives i just jotted down some of the simple school names uh, which i guess are available everywhere in india uh, like uh, uh, dav dps arya samaj as or kendra vidyalaya so these could be the different alternatives what's their reputation how much are they uh, paying their staff how educated the staff is uh, when services are there or not so all these different criteria and alternatives help to reach us to some final decision and and our goal is to choose that school let's take another example of buying a car which i guess most of us could relate to buying a car could be another uh, goal in my hand and and before thinking of alternatives the criteria on which i have to make the decision could be to uh, what is the cost of buying a car and this cost could further be subdivided into four different kind of costs like what is the purchase price what is the fuel cost diesel or a petrol car what is the maintenance cost of this car which is uh, something uh, an annual price to be put on car and what is the resale value when uh, i have used it for say 3 or 4 years or 5 years after that when I'll, i'll i'll go to the market again what is the resale value that this car will give me all those are different kind of costs associated while buying a car or you, one could think of second comes safety third comes style uh, of course style looks uh, that matters a lot how safe it is do it had airbags or not of course these things uh, again contribute to cost some way but uh, they could be different criteria and then finally capacity what is the cargo capacity uh, and what is the passenger capacity so we could think uh, see here that uh, it's a different example from the example we considered last of ram where we only thought of one criteria uh, uh, each criteria singly but now in this example of buying a car uh we are sub breaking a criteria into sub criteria is even so even that's possible with analytical hierarchy processing algorithm um, while while making decisions and finally these criteria are should be available for all the alternatives that we have in hand like 
Accord Sedan, Accord Hybrid, Pilot, CRV, uh, Element, uh, Obes, uh, uh, Odessi, and there could be n number of cars available on uh, which you could think of, and and these are the major details which are uh, which we could find out or uh, uh, while while making a decision about buying a car or not buying a car. Now, using this analytical hierarchy processing algorithm, there's some math involved behind it, uh, where we math, uh, where we try to put some values for all these criteria uh, for these various alternatives, apply some mathematics, pairwise comparison, and kind of things. If you want to go in detail, I'll, I'll talk about them uh, later. And finally, you could make a decision that, depending upon these criteria, which one is the best alternative here. Now coming uh, back to web technology, we are joining the dots. Web application frameworks promote code reuse and reduce the resource requirements, such as time and effort to build and maintain the applications, right? This is what we learned yesterday. In recent years, a plethora of frameworks have been developed with various features. There is no all feature in encompassing framework. Of course, they are full stack frameworks, but uh, they might, might not be of use. So customizable frameworks are possible. Each framework, has its own advantages and disadvantages, uh, like we talked about Django and Flask yesterday. Sustainability of various web frameworks to various application domain varies, of course, and programmers may choose from a variety of web frameworks and different languages that support them. With uh, 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 some may be PHP frameworks, some may be Java frameworks, some may be Python frameworks, uh, and then some may be of uh, some other languages, say R or, or, or uh, Ruby on Rails. Uh, so programmers may choose from a variety of web frameworks and different languages that support them with its own strengths and weakness. Organizations work in different application domains and have diverse properties and constraints with regard to development of application and web services. Now, web framework selection uh, is an optimization problem where the goal is to select highly responsive web framework. We measured performance matrices for various alternatives that acted on our criteria for framework selection. You could think, uh, you, you could see from the definition of uh, uh, web framework selection or, or how I try to portray it, uh, the terms being used are something very similar to that what we have encountered or the terminology that we were encountering in analytical hierarchy processing as well. Now, since we are saying that web framework selection is an optimization problem, this problem falls under category of a MCDM uh, approach, multi-criteria decision-making approach. And uh, we could solve it using analytical hierarchy processing technique. Following could be the list of criteria calculated using something we will encounter like an AB tool or Apache benchmarking tool for each alternative framework. Now, now see what are the criteria I'm thinking of comparing web frameworks. Requests per second that it could receive. What is the time per request? What is the time taken for tests? Time per concurrent request, total data transferred uh transfer it uh, so these could be different criteria but important is that how can we calculate these criteria mathematically for any framework okay so uh, here comes a tool that is apache benchmarking tool it's a free tool it's an open source tool which helps us to calculate all these various criteria for a web uh, web service that's working on let me sh uh, show you this uh, mathematically uh, uh, calculatively actually uh, okay, so uh, last day we 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 had uh, uh, we we talked about this framework Flask, and we made a hello world kind of application uh, web service uh, uh, using Flask, right? And the way to start it was very simple: Python three hello Flask dot py, and then uh, we know that eventually uh, uh, HTTP one twenty seven zero zero one. On 5000 port, this start local uh, uh, local host on 5000 it started right. Now uh, uh, I could simply even uh, using call command I I could simply make a request to it and this is the this is the HTML uh, that was returned to me. It works and uh, uh, corresponding to this request I could note that uh, it was uh, logged into my uh, uh, server logs as well. It's a get request only slashes the request URI HTTP with version this and 200 is the response code. It means everything working fine. We talked about these things in detail. Now uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce to you some some different tool that is Apache benchmarking. You could install it uh, uh, as on, on your terminal. And now uh, you could see what is the command I'm using to 
to do that task uh, of finding criteria for a web framework. AB is the command, and uh, here I'm mentioning which URL it should hit. So the URL it should hit is localhost, or I could say 127.0.0.1, colon 5000 port, of course, 5000 port is working here. And what is the request URI? Only slash is the request URI. And uh, there are some other criteria that I'm giving here. Minus N1000. Here I'm suggesting make 1000 requests to this URL. And out of these 1000, every time 20 should be the concurrency of uh, uh, of our hits. So every time 20 concurrent requests should come, uh, should go at same time. And S3 means uh, the timeout for these requests. It means uh, I should wait for its response, a request response only for three seconds and no more than that. Agar usse zyada lagta hai, toh, we will forget that request. Uska response nahi aaya mal lenge. Okay, so now using this simple tool, uh, you could see that here now it it is uh, it has just shown me that a single request has come to it. Now when I'll run this. The number of requests were increasing. It completed 100 requests with concurrency of 20. Similarly, 200, 300, and tell that 1,000 requests were uh, sent to this URL you, with the help of Apache benchmarking tool. And on my server side, you could see that, OK, so many requests have actually been encountered by this server, uh, uh, this uh, web framework going on. Uh, web server and frameworks are different, but since we do not have involved a server uh, uh, server here, so uh, web framework becomes a server. So uh, uh, so actually, 1,000 requests came, and all those various parameters uh, could uh, be calculated using the Apache benchmarking marking tool, and all those various values, time taken for tests, what was the concurrency level, uh, uh, how many failed requests, how many completed requests, total data transferred, what were the requests per second. So these were the various criteria that I was thinking of. So using this this this, uh, this Apache benchmarking tool, I could mathematically get the values of all those various criteria that could help me in uh, AHP algorithm to find an answer for them. Okay, so simply uh, uh, using the AHP format, I could uh, define this problem, uh, something in the form that I had a goal, which is to find a lightweight uh, framework. And depending upon the criteria, like request per second, type of concrete request, type of request, type of test, total data transfer, and transfer rate. And I have three, if I have three various uh, framework, this is a computation that we have done only for Falcon framework. Similarly, the computation could be done for other two frameworks like Fast API and Flask. Uh, uh, we, we could find the same criteria values and you putting them into the, the mathematical domains of AHP. Uh, analytical hierarchy processing, we could actually select one of the lightweight web framework. Now, let me show you how AHP looks like actually. So this is a R program and uh, uh, there's a, already a library, library AHP that could help you to put the values. So the example we talked about of car earlier, let's go through it. You could format in which uh, the files need to be written. So uh, what are the different alternatives you have to mention, like a card sedan, and uh, you have to give value of those various criteria mathematically for all those uh, criteria that you were thinking of, like price has a mathematical value, MPG has one, and, and so on and so forth. Once you have defined these various alternatives, next comes to define what is your goal. Our goal was to buy a car. And uh, uh, next we give preferences that which criteria should be more important than the other, like cost and safety is three. Actually, the values that we could mention here are, uh, are, are could range from nine to one by nine. Uh, nine will be considered in a way that if I have cost safety nine, that will means cost is nine times more important than safety. Similarly, if I would have written cost safety one by nine, it means that Safety is nine times more important than cost. So in that way, I have to give a pairwise preference. Uh, and, and then uh, if there are some sub criteria, I have to mention them as well. Like uh, purchase cost is 
two times more important than the fuel cost because that's a big lump sum amount and similarly uh, it's comparison with the rest and all those criteria are mentioned in a pair wise fashion and uh, using this uh, uh, this simple library we could actually visualize the problem and later on analyze it so now you could see that uh, what is the final rating uh, that it has tried to give it says that odessi is the car which best suit depending upon the criteria that we have mentioned uh, criteria like cost safety capacity and style uh, depending upon cost they uh, depending upon criteria there could be sub criteria as well so depending upon on these factors and the mathematical values that i have put forth i could actually rank the different alternatives that i was having in hand or i see accord sedan crv element accord hybrid and pallet i have ranked them and the maximum percentage uh, in the final result is obtained by odessi it means it has obtained rank 1 that is odessi is the most favorable according to the criteria that have been mentioned uh, in the ahp model now coming to our own example of web frameworks uh, uh, just for a simple hello world program i took three various alternatives three various web frameworks and uh, like falcon fast api and flask and for each three of them i mentioned what was the request per second uh, it took what is the time per concurrent request time per request time taken for test and so on and so forth and i tried to put all of them in mathematical format so that there could be an easy comparison to be done uh, that could be done finally i defined a goal uh, uh, and uh, which is uh, to find the lightweight micro web framework and then uh, i i defined some uh, uh, some comparison format for uh, all these criteria to be one above the other or pair wise comparison like uh, uh, time taken for test compared to total transferred one simply means that there's no uh, uh, no one which is above other and both are at equal level so it means time for test is equally important as total data transferred i visual visualize the problem this is what i shown you and finally uh, using the analysis using the mathematical formulas of ahp uh, one could find out that uh, the weight of criteria that i have given is 16.7% for all of them it means every criteria was equally important to me and depending upon the values uh, of criteria that i have that that were filled in in ahp model i finally get that falcon gets a percentage of 52.5% fast api has 29.9% and flask has 17% 17.6% the maximum percentage is of falcon it means falcon is one of the lightweight micro web framework depending upon the criteria values that i have mentioned similarly for other use case uh, uh, we could find out some other details uh, uh, we could find out some other results as well for different web framework so uh, this was one of my analysis that uh, for a simple program like a hello world uh, the web framework that wins is falcon which has 50.5 percentage uh, 50.5% uh, as the overall score it means it was the first compared to fast api and flask similarly for another program of fibonacci series uh, falcon was the one uh, fibonacci series you could think it's a computational task for such task as well falcon was again the winner uh, compared to fast api and flask and for something operation which is io oriented input output oriented like a db access database access uh, falcon again wins but the percentage is uh, a little comparable to flask and fast api frameworks where falcon has 34.1% overall result flask has 30 3.2 percentage and fast api was 32.7% uh, as an overall percentage result so you could think of uh, using such criteria that you could compare different web frameworks uh, which are available with you okay so that's how different web frameworks that we talked uh, in one of our previous sessions we could compare them uh, to to finally choose which uh, framework will work best in our scenario okay done with that uh, we will quickly move on to how to manage these different web applications uh and uh
yeah so management of web applications uh, under this uh, uh, presentation we will talk about uh, problems with managing different services what are they uh, uh, how to handle uh, how to handle those problems using supervisor load balancer and docker and kubernetes uh, finally we will see how can we manage nginx and super uh, manage the thing uh, web services via nginx and supervisor and finally we will see uh, how can we do the same things using kubernetes dashboard as well these are some references actually attached for the same uh, where i have explained the things in detail uh, so okay so uh, as web services become pervasive and critical to business operations the task of managing web services and web service architecture will be imperative to the success of such operations management in this case is defined as a set of capabilities for uh, discovering the existence availability health and usage as well as control and configuration of resources where resources uh, are defined as web services uh, components of web service architectures and roles undertaken in the architecture web applications are soft applications uh, services or microservices that run on a remote server uh, the problem of downtown for web applications is important and in such cases is critical for business use as well say uh, google uh, google.com is running this this web service google.com is running and uh, time may occur that uh, some day for even one and hour uh, google.com is not working anywhere think how 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 big this crash would be and it will impact so many businesses or uh, it will impact so many lives uh, so so in 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 that scenarios it's very important that uh, uh, there should be no downtime for such services they should be working all the time they should be available all the time but uh, for making them available uh, uh, what can we do and how can we manage these web applications it's important the main goal in the development of fault tolerant systems is to reduce the maximum system downtime so uh, it's it's of course it's critical for business operations uh, fault tolerant uh, systems should be designed so the main goal in development of fault tolerant system is to reduce the maximum system downtime downtime is a period of time uh, when the system is unavailable for use or does not respond to requests high downtime values can lead to huge business losses actually okay now now this downtime that we are thinking uh, i'm uh, i'm saying could be of two times uh, two types actually one is a planned downtime and other is an unplanned downtime that's there are two type of downtime planned and unplanned planned downtime is the result of uh, maintenance that is inevitable so uh, everything requires maintenance and so the web servers or uh, web applications that are running they also need this so uh, in uh, when we have something already planned that comes under planned downtime it's the result of maintenance and is inevitable we cannot stop it of course everyone needs it it includes applying patches updating the software or even changing database schema as well while unplanned downtime in turn is caused by some unforeseen circumstances for example hardware or software failures failure has occurred or it could be something uh, uh, as uh, as difficult as a disaster has come okay uh, so so that could be some unplanned uh, downtimes uh, now uh, to to to, uh, to deal with such situations actually uh, there are some solutions for managing web applications that have been put forward we will talk about them clustering load balancing and backup server are uh, uh, three different solutions that have been put clustering is actually creating multiple replicas of the application on different servers the cluster includes many nodes that exchange information uh, through shared data thus any node can be disconnected from the network while the remaining nodes in the cluster will continue to function normally so that's a simple thing that we have a cluster of computers which are doing the same job and uh, for some time uh, uh, say say there is a planned downtime uh, uh, we want uh, uh, some of the server to be not working at that point of time so if there is a cluster it means there are more than one computers which are doing the same job i'll simply put, uh, uh, pick one of the servers which needs uh, downtime and then uh, others are handling the load another important thing is load balancing which can effectively increase the availability of critical applications 
uh, you can think of uh, uh, what do I mean by load balancing here uh, could be. It's like a seesaw game. Uh, if uh, uh, sometimes someone's uh, uh, handling the request, another time some some someone else is handling the request. Uh, we will talk about it. So uh, when it is discovered that one of the copies of the application is unavailable, the traffic is automatically distributed to other replicas. For load balancing, various algorithms are used. The most common are round robin uh, technique and it's weighted round robin modification as well. The main objective of such algorithm is to uniformly distribute between the cluster nodes which are available with us. Uh, third is uh, using a backup server, although uh, it, if we, we are using backup server and that backup server is being used, it means something has gone wrong uh, in a main services and we need to uh, critically see those things. Using a back backup server allows a quick switch to a backup replica of the application in the event of a failure of main replica. There are three types of backup servers, cold, hot and warm backup servers. A cold backup server starts only after a failure at a primary server. A hot backup server starts and works with the main one. In a warm backup, the server is powered on but not performing any work. Any work. Uh, or it is turned on uh, from time to time to get updates from the server being backed up. So these are three solutions that we could think of uh, for, managing, uh, 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 for managing our web APIs. Uh, but uh, uh, before proceeding further, let's see that um, uh, where these things actually fit into. And this is the same diagram that I've shown yesterday as well, uh, that how actually web works. Uh, client put a request that goes to networking. After networking, it comes to cloud. Now inside the cloud, you, could you can see that the very first thing is a load balancer, which uh, helps to distribute the requests that are coming to this load balancer to various servers now these this uh, inside the data center all these various servers are put into one group some say five servers and uh, which have our applications of course now all these five servers have same applications which are running uh, 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 they these five different servers are working now as a cluster okay cluster means a group and if uh, one of uh, uh, the servers need some maintenance, then the request will be diverted to four, rest four of them. And uh, uh, what in case there's only one primary server and all other are uh, backup servers, then if primary server fails, then backup server will serve, uh, serve the requests. Or, uh, it's, uh, or the best solution is actually, if we have more than one servers, then uh, use them in a cluster and load balance them. Some services, uh, some of the requests goes to server one, some of them goes to server two. Now these servers have internally applications where web server, web framework and application logic, database connection, templating, all those things are done. And finally, uh, whatever are the results, they're rendered on the browser screen. Important here is to note uh, this term web server. Till date, we have talked about web frameworks uh, where we've seen that Flask is a web framework, Django is a web framework, Fast API, Falcon, those are various web frameworks available in Python only, and, and uh, there are a number of them which are available in Java and other languages as well. So, uh, but but something different from web, web framework is a web server, which we generally encounter uh, as a term. What is a web server? It's a uh, server software or hardware dedicated to running the said software. Even uh, uh, here also in application, we have seen that before web frameworks comes another layer of web server and uh, uh, web servers could be Apache Nginx and so or, or, or maybe others. Uh, so, so what happens uh, is that uh, pages that are delivered are most frequently HTML documents, uh, which may include images, style sheets, scripts, and text documents. When we put some request to us, uh, 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 to some site or some URL, uh, we put in our browser, right? So many generic web, uh, web servers uh, also support some server-side programming or scripting. Of course, uh, ASP, PHP, Hypertext, Preprocess, or other scripting languages uh, are being supported by server-side scripting. This means that behavior of a web server can be scripted in separate files, while the actual server software remains unchanged. Now, uh, talking about this various documents type, the behavior of web servers to be scripted in separate files 
uh, is used to generate these HTML documents. Uh, they could be done dynamically, it means on the fly, or they could be static documents. Uh, uh, on the fly documents or dynamic servers are used for retrieving or modifying information from databases as opposed to returning. Well, static documents are much faster and more easily cached, but cannot deliver dynamic content. Some, some, something that is changed. No, that is not not the case with the uh, uh, with static documents. So, web servers are able to map the path component of a URL into a local file system resource. If it's a static request, or if it does dynamic request, then internal uh, or external program names. So uh, important is that web servers have load limits. A server ha can handle uh, some, some definite amount of load actually. Uh, it can handle only definite amount of requests, uh, like two to 80,000 is generally uh, what a server could handle. By default, uh, uh, it's, it's 5,000 and 1,000 uh, uh, per IP address that's uh, assigned to a, a web server. So there's a limit simply you could think of that a web server can handle at single point of time how many requests. One of the anti-overload technique is to use load balancing, of course, uh, to distribute the uh, requests that are coming to various servers which are working in a, in a cluster. So one product of Apache Software Foundation is called Apache Server, which is dedicated to handling requests and sending responses back, actually. And that's uh, one of the, uh, uh, that makes one of the layer above the frameworks that we, that we put. So there are various features and various files that could uh, uh, have happen to uh, solve some of the problems. Uh, virtual hosting and uh, virtual hosting, it means giving more than one names to the same uh, uh, website is uh, one thing that uh, Apache, uh, Apache could do. Uh, but uh, uh, in market today, there are only two competitors. Majorly, majorly the, uh, there are two competitors which are having most of the traffic being handled uh, as of date on 2021, Apache and Nginx. Uh, now we talked about Apache, but what is Nginx? Apache and Nginx are two most common open source web servers in world. So by, by, by this time, we understand simply that web server are something which takes our request and give us the responses. Rest of the thing is done by uh, web, uh, web frameworks somehow. Okay, so together they are responsible for serving, Apache and Nginx are responsible for serving 50%, which is a very big chunk on the internet, only these two, right? Now the working architecture of Apache and Nginx is a little different. Uh, Apache works on a multi-threading based architecture while Nginx works on an event-driven asynchronous architecture solving C10K problem. If you want to go into detail of thread-based thread, thread -based architecture and event-based architecture, I've jotted it down. I'll share the slides, you could uh, go through them. I've, 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 but the simple thing is that Nginx is a web server uh, which is free open source high performance HTTP server and reverse and, and, and supports something like uh, reverse proxy as well as IMAP POP3 proxy server as well. Okay, it has a rich set of uh, tools with it like and, and, and gives high performance stability, rich set, uh, uh, simple configurations and, and, and things of that sort. Okay, so but, but but why are we saying all these things? Uh, because these things were lacking in Apache web server because that was a server that came in around 1995 to 2000. But uh, solving present problems, Nginx is one server which is used these days mostly. So uh, high concurrency is one of the things that uh, web APIs could encounter. But uh, to handle this thing of uh, having high concurrency, it's important uh, that we should have a knowledge of web servers. Uh, we should know what are different web servers and uh, what are the pros and cons of each of them. Why it's important, uh, since the beginning of web service, the level of concurrency has been continuously growing. It's not uncommon for a popular website to serve hundreds of thousands and even millions of simultaneous users. While other parts of equations such as CPU, memory, disk, network capacity, all contribute to take such decisions of how to manage these webs, uh, uh, manage these, uh, 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 manage different web services. But high concurrency is one of the main concern uh, during management as well, because high concurrency could lead to load limits, and those load limits could happen that uh, could lead to some uh, unplanned uh, uh, downgrade of the service as well. So how Nginx solves it, uh, 
so angelic solves in a way that it it's aim at solving some some problem called c10k problem of having 10000 simultaneous connections and angelic was written with different architectures in mind in which uh, uh, it's most suitable for non linear scalability and nginx can now deliver tens of thousands of concurrent connections on a server with typical hardware uh, uh rest of my points have been jotted down uh, what's up yeah uh, so all these things that uh, I've, i've talked i've jotted these points uh, uh, on on my medium blogging site i hope you would have loved this session uh, and and would love to know a little more about them uh so must visit these references reference links that i have uh that i have put here down let me try to copy them for you and show them on the chat uh yeah uh so that's majorly about uh, how to compare web frameworks and what are how to manage web uh, web frameworks for which we need to have the knowledge of web servers and what are the different web servers which are commonly used uh, these days one is apache and another is nginx uh, to get more details about them you must visit this uh, blogging sites uh, that's my time any questions you could uh, write me to my email id that i shared yesterday Okay thank you everyone thank you very much sir that's my time thank you and uh, nice session sir thank you hope it was informative okay uh thank you all and uh, we will meet 11:15 on session 13 so leave from here and join session 13 on 11:15 thank you all